Hey players, so let's continue where we left off by opening Mugen itself and I'll go over this quite twiddly because I know not everyone knows how to do this kind of thing so there's two main folders that you're using, actually you're pretty much exclusively using these folders these are called chars and data don't worry about docs, fonts and all other folders right now, just chars and data ok first of all go into chars and copy Kung Fu Man uh, I'll be using the Kung Fu Man because I don't think wait, I have KFM. One sec. You know I have KFM. Okay, so copy Kung Fu Man and um, paste, and it will name it Kung Fu Man Copy or Kung Fu Man One. So rename it to your character's name. It may not be called Asuna. Now next, we double click in the character or click up here on Mac. I'm not sure how that works, but it's a uh, then change all of the file names to your character's name um, actually I'm going to do this manually because I don't want it to be called Sina1 oh it's because he has two CNS files, yes um, yeah be careful with that generally um, characters only have one CNS file and the others are for extra code and such um, although the code always indexes an, a CNS file called common which is used for basic movement, standing still, uh, running, jumping, ju well not jumping but it's just basic stuff and dealing with the, um, the animations that play when a character is hurt but it's never opened for me when I've made a character but I've seen it in other characters so I believe it feels hidden so that should be fine, it's common one is here somewhere um, so I'm going to do that in that center too. If I don't need it, I'll just delete it, but I can't remember what that is because I've not used this template for a while. Anyway, delete any random windings. Uh, I don't need this. Delete that too. And double click on your death file. No, first of all, actually, your air file is your animations. Your command file is all commands to play. Um, so this will call on your um, CNS files to run the correct functions when you press certain buttons so that helps line that up and does the AI and stuff too um, your CNS file is your code so your command file calls these functions by their numbers uh, each attack is or jump or whatever is um, given a number and that number is used to call it your def file is um, what holds everything together it tells um, the cat tells me again where all the files are. I'll show you in a second. The SSF, the SFF file, sorry, is your sprites. Uh, your audio is your au I'm sorry, your AU format sound is your um, your sounds, your music, and that's another CNS. Double click your def file, and you'll see as name, display, and offer. Now, before we get into anything else, what I want you to do is type in what I'm about to show you here. Because KFM is missing something that we need. I know it's called Suna now. So change the Kung Fu Man to your character's name. I'll be calling it Suna. And change this to your name. No, it's his play name, sorry. Uh, Suna. Or so at the Suna Yosh, I might it later, depending how I feel. So the off will be Freza and Next, type this in. Uh, the Mugen version, if you don't want the character to be AI, you don't need to put this in, you can put the date as that. This disables the AI. I'll delete the offer name down here. Duplicated that. Uh, now these are your PAL defaults. Um, I'm not sure what this does because it always seems to pick the order that you place them in inside Mugen, so I'll get into that later, but I just put one, two, three, four, five, six. Generally, but we only have zero palettes right now, so I'll just disable that just in case. I'm pretty sure there's no yeah, there's no need to because it will just default palette one, so I won't even. <coughs> now we go to our files and change all these to our character's name. So Cinna and Cinna two for AFC one. Common, just keep that as common one. You won't see common one because it's hidden, but if you change your hidden files to be visible, then you'll see common one. So I'd actually like if that opened. I know there's a way to show that inside Mugen so that it opens, so you can mess with that, but 
and you can do some make sounds playing your walking animation like Aletti does, the snowboard character, but uh, delete the intro and storyboard lines, uh, keep this in just in case I've seen other people do this, but if you know that it works fine, delete that, but you know, I like to be safe. Okay, now close this and open your character up in Fire Factory 3. Now, a problem I had when following tutorials, which stopped, held me back from making a wedding character for an entire year, well, I only tried for like two months, but whatever, is that I didn't know how to save characters, so I'm going to show you how to save your character. So, uh, go into your Mugen, your Charge, and your um, character, and then open up the dev file. The dev file calls everything else, so when you open up your dev file, everything will open because it tells Mugen where they all are. And you'll see everything open up, opens up fine. Now, before we get started, make sure your character opens up and saves properly. So, it's opened up right, so click on the Fit Project, Save As, not Save All or that Save button, but Save As. And uh, go to Mugging Charge Suna and your dev file. It will say dev down here, so it will always show the right file type so that you won't actually save your you sprites as your animations or anything. So, that's pretty nice of Mugging to do. Although I'm pretty sure it's one yes, Windows it does that now again. This uh, anyway. And save that over. And choose Mugen 1.0, not beta. 1.1 is a bit buggy and beta, you don't want to use that because it's old and outdated. So 1.0. And then the SFF file, the air file, the Windows command. CNS1, this can be a bit, get a bit tricky, it's CNS2 because it doesn't tell you the name uh, and a check that your character actually works and we have Kung Fu Sinner ok that's perfect, so this is your win state, this is what plays when your character wins so, uh, why is this in Japanese again? type uh, apostrophe and then win you need the state def and the text be on a line of each other and that will change the name of that. We don't want it to be called gibberish, so delete all this and change this to apostrophe lose. Um, I, yeah, I think this is a win state decider, so delete this and put win state decider. And what we're going to do is copy all this code and delete it. Just highlight absolutely everything. and check that the character still works. It should be able to move left, right, but it won't be able to attack now. And that's perfect. And press F1 to make your opponent die to make sure that your win still works. Now next I'm going to show you how to enable AI for your opponent. Go into Tools up here, Options, click on Mugen, add your Mugen if it's not already added. I believe you click on Add and then add to your Mugen from your desktop and go into edit change current char versus current char which isn't actually because I've set this to Kung Fu Man manually so you can change that to any character name and that will appear change it to Kung Fu Man AI now this is the Kung Fu Man but Kung Fu Man isn't that good so it will take Kung Fu Man ages to kill you so just press F2 to change both your HP to 1 so that he'll kill you in one hit that means our win works and our lose works if you want to time out you can press F5 generally you want to press it instantly so that you'll um both player draw animation. Actually that was pretty fast, he's a one frame character so you might disable the eye for that but that's how you test your draw, your win and your losses and the fight in general for character. Now back on to the actual tutorial. Uh, this gets tricky, open up the organizer by clicking this here, organize. Now over here are your palettes. Kung Fu doesn't actually have any um, real palette. Okay, so just delete all these. Make sure you don't delete any of the 5000 and 9000 sprite, delete the one after 5000 anything between 8,000 and 9,000. If you mess up you can press Control Z. It's good. So 8,000. 9,000 0 is the icon that shows in the top left and top right next to your health bar. 9,000 and 1 is the large picture of your character that appears in the Mugen menu. The 5,000s are all the necessary heart sprites. You want to delete everything in between. Okay now if everything's deleted except the heart sprites and the 9,000s we can start inserting sprites. So I'm going to open up Cine Sprite. I believe I had an idle animation. It's been a while since I recorded the first part of the serial. Zero, zero. Perfect. You can change the X and Y axis if you know that your character generally is in the same axis each frame. You want to put it around here so that they're um, 
standing just kind of like the loops didn't delete the, the first frame. No, it was 5000. Uh, reorganize that. Mm. Click in onion skin once you've placed the first frame. Onion skin um, shows where the frame that you pressed the onion skin button was on. Do use it, it's extremely helpful. It's fine. So next, go into animations. Usually people cover the sprites first, then go into animations, but um, I just want to show you that you can't just call the sprites from your scripts, you have to set it up in animations as well. The sprites aren't actually that important when you put it that way because even if you insert all your sprites at once, you might not even use half of them. So once you've deleted all the frames here, so you only have one frame, actually I'm going to delete zero frames as well. We'll start with animation zero. Zero is your idle animation which is in common1.cns. So this will play um, all the frames in your zero. I'm going to put idle for that. I wish they were named properly, but it looked a bit too busy for that. But in all of the frame numbers and... Uh, oh, I probably should explain this, sorry. It will organise it based on the group number, so even if you have group 0 index 9997, it will be before group 1 index 0, because um, group 0 is before group 1. The index numbers are used to show the order of the frames. That makes it easier for us to just do this and put in group 0 index 1 for the first frame in the idle animation. Group 0 index 1 for the second, group 0 index 2 for the third, and so on. Index 5, group 0 index 6. Now what I usually do with this sort of thing is I click this button here. It's a red notepad icon called Edit the Current Animation as Text. And as you'll see here, it looks complicated at first, and it was for me too. When it was shown in the first tutorial I watched, I was very confused, but I'll explain it. The first 0 here is our group number. The second is our index number. The third is our x position. The fourth is our y position, so vertical. This is horizontal. And ten is the time the frame shows, so that's ten frames. So if we change this to twenty, and this to ten, minus is up and positive is down, so this will be down, so the character will be slightly lower than it should be, it will be to the right. Um, and it will play for 5 frames. So as you can see, we are now below where we should be. I'm going to disable the onion skin now. But we don't want that, I'm just showing what it does. That should help you understand that. To mess it in with and see what it does yourself. Uh, that sounded rude, but I'm not trying to be rude. And apply. Now for the time, if we want everything to be 7 frames, this is much easier without using the edit text. You can just change the time to whatever you want to be, so like 6 frames or 8 frames, and click this button here to apply it to all future frames. Now what I did at first was I made a walk right sprites and walk right sprites, walk left sprites by editing. I didn't know you could flip sprites, but you can flip sprites, so just go into flip, flip horizontal, and this, this allows you to make walk right and walk left, and uh, such without actually editing it, which is a pain, so. This is very convenient, make sure that's back to the way it should be. And he's kind of dancing. I don't want him to dance, so we'll make that. Yeah, these are in the wrong order. Frame zero, 0 is in here for some reason. 0, 1, 2, okay, 0, 5, 0, 6. I think 9 will be a good number for that. So anyway, next uh, is, this is your turning sprite, so when your character turns, so I'm just going to make a little hop. Now press play and see what happens. Your character will be your character, as long as you don't move, but as soon as you move you turn invisible. And when you turn around you'll show up for a brief second. So yeah, your character will be done when all the frames are visible. So what do we have next? Actually I put that to name that turn. I use um, a template which tells, well I made the template that tells me what animations play and what numbers I've actually forgotten. I think six is crouched, but anyway. Open up again. Type the docs and go to SPR Hit Sprites, which is a Google Chrome file, which will open up a Google page, like so, which tells you all the Hit Sprites and where to align them. So I can these for now, explain those later, and go to Recommended Group Numbers. So 0 is standing, 5 is turning, 10 is, oh, 10 is standing crouch, so 12, 11 is scratching, but the one I use, use 6 for some reason. Ah, uh, okay, so. I'm going to move this to my other screen, which you can't see. And uh, if you don't have two monitors, this is going to be a pain for you, but I guess that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to insert more sprites. So insert your crouching sprites as group 10 or 11. 
I'm going to put it as group 11 because I can change that manually later. Don't put them as both in 11, you can just edit the animation in a second. Because the code calls the um, animation, not the sprites. This is 2479, so. Huh. Yeah, that wouldn't help, so. Uh, you can align them when you insert the sprites, so that makes that easier, but I didn't do that. So. Next is 20, which is walking forwards. Ignore the 10, 11, 12 thing right now. We'll deal with that in a second. I hope this is manually in the right order, but I've made a few templates to explain to you how to make a walking animation. I made this like a month ago, so or like three weeks ago, so I've been prepared. I've actually re-recorded this serial series a bit twice now because I want it to be as simplified as possible. I'm going to rush through it, well not really rush through this, but like try and keep the pace up so uh, pause if you're taking longer but you're probably doing this faster than I am because I'm a pleb. Okay. I'm pretty sure this looks off. Edit it later. You can also edit the position via the animations, but it's not wise because if you want to call the sprite later without duplicating it and moving the duplicate, then you want the sprite to be in the right position, otherwise you need to keep moving it every animation you use it in. Is that yeah, that's the last one. God, this looks awful. Group 20. Actually, no, sorry, we'll do this first. So, delete the hitbox if you've got any of those. We'll add those in when we're done. And change this to stand to crouch. You might want to do this because your character can be used as a template for you as long as you do it correctly. It makes your next project much easier. I really don't know why they didn't make like a kung fu in with the text button to show you where they all are because it's really annoying. When I first made the character I kept the sprites in so I knew roughly where they were, but 12 is stand to crouch. I'm just get off. I'm not even going to put that in, but what you would do here is for stand to crouch. Do I have any sprites that would actually work for that? I don't think I do, so even so slightly. Yeah, that could work, yeah. I'll use this sprite, so I'll put that as 11.4 because I can't remember where I left off. And I'll put this slightly below, and I will put a space here, I'll copy this, change this to 11.4, put the time as 3 frames, and put it as 2 frames. And this is our standard crouch animation. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's just one frame. And stand... Did I... Crouch to stand story? Sorry. Oh, it just occurred to me that's such an error and um, it says group 10 to and 12 are both stand to crouch. <laughs> that's their mistake, not mine, but uh, 12 is actually crouch to stand. That was a really dumb mistake there. So crouch to stand is group 12. For that I'm just going to reverse this process and put the stand sprite like here. And then 0, zero for one frame, which is a little inconsistent because I didn't, I didn't do it a second ago, but yeah, that's good. So group 20 is walking forwards. This uses group 21, but I'm going to delete all these sprites. And add group 20 index 0. And group 20 index 1. Now I've made a picture for you here, let me just... There it is. Now in this picture I explain the weight of running animation should... Well, I shouldn't say should, but like the way I did it. Now if you look here, you'll see that um, in the background, and I have the shaded leg and in the foreground I have the leg with the lights hitting and this continues for the first four frames no, five frames even or rather um, that's the foot that's going backwards but in the latter frames the shaded foot is the one that's going forwards this is a little bit cut out, I don't know why but so in the first frame he's just standing still ready to move forward in the second frame, his um, highlighted leg is moving forward and his shaded leg is supporting him. Then in this frame, it's slightly shorter because he's kind of airborne, running forward. And in the fourth frame, he's about to um, land, or he is landing rather. And then in the fifth frame, it's the same as the first frame except it's flipped so that um, 
he's not standing in the shade of the leg, he's standing in the leg the lighter setting. So the first, um, the second, third and fourth frame in reverse. Anyway, back to the tutorial. So just mess around with that until it looks right. It's good for experience as well, if you're wanting to make a lot of 2D games and make characters and such, or even 3D animation, it's good to know how a walk cycle works. As my animation lecturers have told me, it's very hard making walk cycles, which is before I'd made any in 2D. And I'll call this walk. Uh, next, go into your editor and copy all this text here. And for group 20, change the name to that of that to walk back. And delete all these. All that, you can just go into this and delete it like that. Bam, it's gone. Control V to paste it. Apply. Flip horizontal. Change all the frames horizontal. And now we have a walking back animation. Uh, skip all the 100 is run forward and 105 is hop back. Okay, it's missing grip 100 for whatever reason, so I'm just going to add new animation, grip 100, okay. Paste this in here. So for the walking back, pluck that again. And this is the running back, so change it to running back. Run back, or running back. Run forward. And now we can go back to 21. 40 rather. Now this is where you start jumping, that's just going to be one frame. If it's more than one frame, then if you cancel your jump, the character will kind of spaz out mid-air and it'll look dumb, so just make that one sprite so it doesn't do that. If you know how to fix that issue, then by all means. Did I even... What are the jumping sprites? Huh, there's no jumping sprites. I probably just missed them. There has to be jumping sprites. Ah, this works. Okay, so, group 40 zero. Position that real quick. No, it's going to be the, the um, I'm going to duplicate this actually, so press the duplicate button, which is the two images overlapping each other. And I'll change that to frame group 40 index 2, and this will be the actual. Just in case I want to use that later. Okay, so for the jump start. Group 40 index. Index 1 will be the jump start frame. I'm just going to add the hitbox to this right now. Bam, hitbox. 41 will be the jump neutral upwards. I would recommend adding you know, jump forwards, jump backs, and jump neutrals because it looks better because your character will be jumping a lot. I'm guessing so anyway. Uh, this will be jumping neutral, but. I'm going to change this to group there, so this is jumping neutral. I won't add, well actually, I guess that is to, if it's flipped then it's... So 42 is jumping forwards, jump forwards. Delete all this. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to move that up manually. When your character is near the ground like this, this will change the walking animation anyway, so it's, it works better. Uh, and for 42, use the same frame but flip it. So we can go into the editor, delete all the collision boxes, control V that, and change that to... Damn, I forgot to do that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it's comma H, not just the H. And that will be jump backwards. Although it actually looks better sometimes to not have that flip when they're jumping backwards, but uh, for this case, it definitely will look better. <laughs> so you know, uh, forty-seven is jump landing. So for the jump landing, as this just happened to show up here, I'll be using Crips 11 0. Because the crouching sprites just look perfect for the jump landing. I'm going to make that 5 sprites actually. Uh, group 120 is guard starting when the character is standing, so we'll want to add our block sprites now. I'm just going to put them all on 120. Okay. So that will go into group 120. I'm not going to bother putting them in group 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 because I like to keep all the sprites in the same rough categories as each other. 
in the same group number. I don't like to make group 120, 1 and 122s. I'm just going to skip this part of the tutorial. Now periodically you want to click the save button up here which is save all but make sure if you've opened up another project to um, redo the save as process because what will happen is um, it will forget where your like, sprites were located, your sounds were located, so it will save everything except that and that's noticeable when you're like, you'll make a new attack and you're going to move, um, your move version you're going to test your character out and what will happen is your an attack will play and the sound will be missing or an attack will play and the sprites will be missing what the sound will be playing um, or the animations will be missing um, so yeah that happens actually quite frequently so make sure you frequently save as if you've done something weird like open up another character's project or look at their titles and stuff so uh, it's a kind of glitch which shouldn't happen but yeah so I should probably <laughs> do stuff when I'm talking not just sit here and talk so this is when you're standing not crouching so uh, this is the actual start so um, you would just want this to be like one frame or something uh, I'm going to put three frames and I'm not even going to put a uh, hitbox because I'm a dish. Stand, guard, start. And one, two, one is the start crouch, you know, start guarding when you're crouching. Guard, start, crouch, or I'm spelling of G A, but you'll probably spell it of U A, so G U A R D. Damn Americans. <laughs> The trouble like that's caused me when I'm typing in the hit def. Um, <coughs> I'll tell you what hit def is later, but 120. How many sprites did I put in this? Okay, that's 120-0, of course it's 120-0, I must have started with one and missed it. Yeah, okay. Three frames. And as you'll have guessed, this is guard start here. Uh, I know I had a better strike for that. The place in my use this. So you want it to be a little above the, um, the line here. And I'll make that one frame. No. Yeah, one frame. And because uh, the character will be airborne for very long anyway, so it doesn't matter. And that's not air guard. That's uh, 130 is guard when you're standing. I'm just going to really quickly go to 132 one, and change uh, that to the. Um, this. Uh, it's only two frames, so I'll just the collision box first. So this is for the blue collision. Be very careful when you do this, which is, I should mention this before. When you select collision boxes, Mugen is very likely to crash. This is the only crash issue with Mugen, but it happens very frequently. So it's generally when you click tiny, um, when you click multiple collision boxes at once, or click a small collision box. Um, it will happen a lot at first, but you subconsciously start avoiding what's caused it in the past, so uh, it won't be a problem for long, it's just for when you first get started, although it did happen like 12 hours ago, so I probably shouldn't be talking, but generally I can only avoid it, so it only happens like one every two characters, so although it has happened like five times in one character once, so don't get frustrated with it, just, you know, be very careful when you're editing your hitboxes. The red collision box is your, um, is for damaging but you won't if you think you can just get away with like putting like this during a block animation don't because uh, it won't even attack because your animation is an index as an attacking animation although you could go into your common your common CNS and change it to attacking animation but that would be a dish move to make your character damage the opponent when they're walking forward and stuff and it would mess with the opponent's eye by making them block constantly thinking that you're small or a slow projectile <laughs> it'd be very unfair but some people have done it in the past and it's just it's not very welcome in the community so I'm going to go into this and copy and paste all of this. 
just so I can like see the animation a little more. I'm going to change this to one frame, this to two frames, this to one frame, this to two frames. One, two, one, two. No, that should be, sorry, two, one. Yeah, it looks awful. Four, five, five. A four. Why does it look so janky? Is it really that? Let me just test this. Yeah, it's the flames. It's because I only have a few frames of the flames, so it's messing it up. Whatever, that looks fine. Um, so back to 130. This is the stand guard, so that'll be 120. No, that'll be stand guard. Uh, that may be the wrong order, but it should work for now. I don't even want this spray actually. I'm going to change that as the, um, as the start guard stand. 1, 29, I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be anyway, so I'll change all of these to one frame. Or two frames actually. And I'll change this to four, um, six frames. Because I don't like the animation, it's, I think that's how it's supposed to be anyway, so that looks better. Uh, any more specs I should be using for this? I missed a few, but whatever, it looks. I should probably stop saying whatever, it's one of those dumb habits you get when you're nervous. I shouldn't be nervous because we're all friends here, right? The last video is probably going to end a cringe compilation. <laughs> Uh, anyway, group 1 v 1 is guard start, no sorry, guard crouch. So once again I'll just be using this. Bam, done. Don't worry about your hitbox when you're guarding because that's included in McGinn, so even if you're being hit, um, you're still guarding. It's not like you need, um, it's, only, it's not like you're only guarding if you don't have a hitbox, it's just, um, yeah. Actually I'm not going to be that unfair, I'm going to put, um, the hitbox during this. I'm pretty sure this is still included. I'm a little paranoid to put like them being able to be hit when you're starting your guard, but um, I'm pretty sure it works anyway. If it doesn't, you can always edit it, but yeah. Okay. If your character isn't moving, you can just use the same hitboxes by selecting your hitbox and changing it to all frames by clicking this. You can change the blue frames to red frames by doing this. Uh, I mean the blue hitboxes to red hitboxes which is do damage or vice versa. It switches all selected hitboxes but only select one at a time. And this will do it for all of them. I'm going to move that all of it to the right and manually set this one to be part of the hitbox. Although sometimes it does this and just deletes all of other frames or makes them invisible, I'm not sure what it is, but there, that's perfect. That's a little bit too far to the left, so. I meant too far to the right. That's perfect. And I'm going to copy. 120, 15, 2. Yeah, that should do it. And when that starts playing, I'll change that to 5 frames. 4 frames, 4 frames, 5 frames. Yeah. 
you probably only be guarding for a second or two, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. It will actually probably look better if it loops back to the start of the frame because it will appear actually blocking the attack as it on as it goes on and not just using the same block. Uh, one three one is guard crouch, which I have done, so I should have named that, but I didn't. There we go. Save all. Did I name anything really? <laughs> One forty is stop guarding, so uh, for this I'm just going to use the start frame, so stop guarding crouch, this will be fine, I'm not going to put that box. Because uh, often AI will, the enemy will trick your AI into stop guarding by stopping an attack for a frame or two, then wrecking you because you won't have time to start guarding again, because you'll probably all be starting a counter attack. Uh, 140, 141, oh yeah. Yeah, 140 was stand, so this should be 120 at 0. That threw me off for a second, sorry. Look. There we go. Stop and guard. This is very tedious, but bear with me. One, four, two, stop, guard, air. Stop, guard, air. One fifty is guard, guarding a hit with your stand. Um, Do I have anything better for that? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's perfect. One five one is guarding a hit while you're crouching. I'm going to do something dumb here and just flip the crouch animation. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move it backwards. That looks even better. And change that to five frames. And for two, that's guarding a hit when you're in the air. And guarding a hit air. And don't worry, this is the last of the um, necessary basic sprites. Although the hit sprites will be much more painful to input. Well, tedious is probably the better word, but painful's who I would call it after making about 12 characters or edits with the hit sprites. Now 170 and 181, so these are your lose and win animations. 170 is your lose animation, so uh, we'll do the win animation first because we need some positivity to go for this boring ass process. So do I even have lose? No, I don't. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm the win sprites. Did I really not? <sighs> oh, and there's the stand guard. He actually had a stand guard animation. Uh, well, his cape's more... Um, Appropriate well, I might as well use them somewhere. So this will be kind of like Yosha thing, but it should be his, one of his attacks, but 
It looks kinda cool if you use one of your attacks during your one animation anyway, so you want the one animation to look as cool as heck. And then he'll do this. And that'll be his one animation, so I'll change that to group 181. And I probably should have put a better position in that, so I'll have that manually. Now it's like midnight now and I haven't had dinner yet and uh, I had to have a sister and a brother to be respectful to. Well my brother won't be going to sleep for another few hours but uh, you know, I probably want to get some dinner on as well so. Um, just add your <coughs> wind sprites as group 181 and your low sprites as group 170 and add them into your animations and I will show you in the next tutorial how to add palettes and then we'll get on to the hit sprite. Actually no, we'll do palettes after we do the hit sprite, so that's a group 9000s, but um, if you go to the top of this here, this shows you the frames you need. So 5000 zero is hit well standing slightly, um, hit by standing kind of heavy, so that's group 5000 index 10, group 5000 index 20, you don't need anything in between, so just 0, 10, 20. Remember to use the duplicate sprite button to like do this to make it easier. Um, and uh, to align, there's an align button when you insert sprites that you can click. So align to feet means your feet are on the like the line. Uh, align to torque midsection means you put your your stomach area in the middle of the line where your feet would normally be. And align to head means that you put your head on the line. And so this be um, your head on the line when you're being hit hard. So that's 5002. Well thanks for watching and I'll uh, show you that in the next video. Bye!